What's going on? This is a long video, so I'm going to put a table of contents with a lot of links in the description area of the video. That way, if you're interested in a certain part, you can just go right to it. In the first part of the video, I'm relocating the amp I had already installed in the trunk compartment to under the passenger seat. And then I am going to be installing the Alpine KTP 445U power pack unit to you know supplement that and add a little bit of power to the door speakers. I was gonna make two separate videos, but it just became difficult to, to kind of juggle the two separate lines of the installation since I was doing them at the same time, so I decided to just put them together. I have everything I'm gonna need for the installation laid out on this table, at least what I could think of right off the bat. So of course I have the amplifier right here, wire cutters, razors, solder, flux for the solder, soldering gun, 14 millimeter socket and wrench, or the seat, 10 millimeter to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery, a multimeter in case I need to take any reading. Of course, I have the Alpine uh, instructions. You should definitely read through these before you you know, start your project. Speaker wires, wire markers, heat gun, and the heat gun is for the heat shrink in front of it. A notepad in case I need to take any notes or remind myself of anything, and my phone to take pictures as I go so um, I don't miss anything. All right, before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm getting ready to take out this amplifier. When I initially installed the amplifier, I put it behind the seat right here, and you know, it worked and it's fine, but it's not an optimal location. So I wanted to get it out of here and uh, install it underneath the passenger seat. So that's what I'm gonna do. The power cable for it was ran on this side of the car while all the other wires were ran on the other side. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pull all these panels right here, pull the power cable back out, and run it to the other side, and I'll show you exactly how I did that. All of the other cables should be pretty easy because they're all on the other side already. My plan for now is to leave the sub where I originally had it, but since I'm relocating the amplifier under the passenger seat, I have to now run a cable for the sub from that location. So this is that cable right here, and I'm running it from the back, from the trunk area, to under the passenger seat, and I'm also leaving plenty of slack back there in case I want to move the location of the sub in the future. If you're doing this installation from scratch, you're not going to have to worry about this step, but I'm not. Unfortunately, I originally ran the cables to the trunk, so now I have to take all the cables back out from the trunk area, take them out of the trim where they were attached, and run them under the passenger seat. And I'm also running the sub cable while I'm at it. All right, so I've reached the point where I have to remove the seat to get to finish my installation, so um, if you didn't know how to remove the seat, it's pretty simple. There's four, four 14 millimeter bolts. Two of them are behind these two little covers. So I'll take those off. The front ones are exposed. They're pretty easy to get to. Once you remove the four bolts, you have to remove the cable that services the seat. The seat has a few electronic systems, it has airbags, airbag sensing, it has uh, heated seats, and they're all, they all get serviced by this cable down here. So we're going to go ahead and remove that cable. Alright, so we got the cable off. Now we can fully remove the seat. So now that the seat is off, um, I could do a dry fit test. And I think I settled on this arrangement right here. The Rockford Fosgate is gonna go in the middle just like this, and the Alpine is gonna go tucked into the corner just like it is there. And the reason I went with this arrangement is because there's still channels here where their AC can go through, and there's plenty of room around both of them to uh, so that they don't overheat or anything like that. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, since I already have the cables ran for this amplifier, I'm gonna run the power, the power, the ground, and the accessory, and I'm gonna tap right into the existing wires that I have right here. The rest of the cables, I'm going to extend all the way to the head unit. So these are gonna get tucked in like this, and they're gonna extend, and these two, these are, these are, I'm gonna cut these off, and then they're gonna also run around this way, and they're gonna run all the way to the back of the head unit. The way that I am going to end up attaching these two so they don't go anywhere is I am going to cut a piece of uh, thin plywood and it's going to go underneath the carpet and then these are going to screw into that piece of plywood and um, then we should have a nice sturdy installation and uh, you know it should work out so
So because this is not a fresh installation, I'm I, I'm kind of working with what I got here. And the cable, I originally routed it this way because it was going to the trunk. But now that it's going to the other side, I have a few choices to make. And I was going to take it and route it behind, behind here and that way. But I, I kind of don't want to disturb any of that stuff back there. And there's no no perfect place i was looking back there and i didn't find a, a perfect spot to do it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna leave the cable where it's at there and i'm gonna route it this way and i'm gonna route it under the carpet under there that way to the amplifier that way i am not messing with you know any of the cables back there behind the ignition and the airbag in order to get under the carpet we're gonna have to pull off this panel so you just pull up that way and remove it completely. All right, I'm going to show you my progress. Um, I found a spot for the ground, which I'm going to show you in a sec, and I routed the power cable. So the two main cables that go to uh, the amplifier are in place, and I also have the audio cables right here, which I'm about to organize and also figure out. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a mess, I know. But uh, yeah, let me show you where the ground is. There's a grounding point right there. So that's that's where I put it. It's perfect, perfect, perfect location. Right, so it comes out right with the other where the other cables come out of. So if I'm gonna put the amplifier I'm gonna put the amplifier there and the ground should reach just reach just right right there the Alpine power pack is meant to be installed close to the head unit so the wires are not gonna be long enough to reach under the passenger seat and they have to be extended now you can use butt connectors to simplify this part of the install but I always prefer to solder put the heat shrink in through the cable before twisting the wires together and then move it away from the joint then strip about half an inch off the end of each cable. Overlap the strands of the cable and then twist them together. This is just a basic inline splice. They're pretty easy to make, solid and forgiving. They also look pretty clean when they're done. All of the tools you see here are pretty cheap and they're worth having around if you like doing things yourself. Touch a small piece of the solder to the tip of the soldering iron and then press it against the joint to start the heat transfer. After a couple of seconds, touch the solder to where the soldering gun and the wires meet and then let the solder melt through the strands. Don't overdo it here. If you take too long, you can start melting the cable shield. Put the heat shrink in over the splice and then use the heat gun to shrink it into place. If you don't have a heat gun, you can always use a lighter. So as you can see right here, I extended all of the cables and the reason I did that is because I'm not going to be installing the Alpine behind the head unit or in the glove box. It's going to be kind of far away from it on, under the passenger seat. So I had to extend the cables. Of course, if you're not going to do that, you won't need to do this part. I did it because this, this amplifier is already going to be under the passenger seat. So I'm going to tap into the power and the remote and the ground of it. And I figured I'd have them both in the same location. So that's why I did that. So I'm also going to put the brackets on there. I'm gonna take this opportunity to check the dip switch settings. So I want the front and the rear high pass filter to be set to off. I wanna use the amplifier as a four channel amplifier and I'm not using RCA, I'm using speakers level input so I'm gonna open up this little tab there and verify one and two are set to off those are good three and four set to off those are also good input is set to four channel and then okay so I have to change it from RCA to speaker level input that's the only change I had to make all right, let me do another fit test here. 
I have the amplifier. The main amp is going to go right here. And then the Alpine is going to get tucked in right in this corner right here. So I already have the cable wrapped up. So it's going to be just like that. And it's going to go right here in this corner. Um, there's a hole right here in the carpet where it's going to run through the hole on this side right here. And obviously the power and all those other cables I'll fix up when I do the installation itself. But I'm about to put the piece of wood. So notice this is very thin. I don't want to make it thick because there's already padding under there. And if you make it too thick, then you're not going to be able to, to secure it properly. And it's going to stick out too much. So this is very, very thin uh, quarter inch plywood. So that's what I'm going with. Right here. Make sure it's not interfering with anything. And it's not, it's just sitting there on the floor. Okay, I'll fix those in a minute. So there's some foam right underneath the carpeting right here that's kind of bulging it out. But once the amplifiers are screwed into the board, it'll kind of push it down and over time it'll just flatten. So that should be okay. I'm not going to permanently install them yet until I am 100% that everything works and that everything's adjusted the way it's supposed to be. That way I don't have to take anything back out. As you can see, I removed the stereo. I've already done a video where I go over this in detail, so I'm going to link that in the description if you're interested. But for now, all I'm doing is identifying which are the speaker cables that I'm going to need for the Alpine installation. All of these cables go to the back of the radio, all of these right here. So it's quite a bit, quite a bit of connectors. But the ones that you're going to be interested in are going to be these two right here. There's, there's a 10 and a 6 pin right there. They're pretty standard, 10 and 6. And they're the ones that are going to connect right there, connector A, on the bottom left side, the big, the big connector right there. And from the factory, they actually put pieces of electrical tape around each pair that goes to a speaker. So here you have your two front and then you have your two rear right here. So they made it kind of easy to identify which are the cables. So these cables are going to get spliced right, right about here. Okay. And the end that goes to the head unit is going to go to the input of the Alpine. And the Alpine is going to amplify the signal and it's going to send it out to the end that goes to the speakers that way. So that's all we're doing. Let's look at a diagram of the back. So. Here's a diagram of the back of the stereo, the head unit, and the corresponding pinouts for it. We're not concerned with the Harman Kardon portion of it. This video is not for you guys with the Harman Kardon um, stereos. It's for the basic internally amplified uh, stereo that, that comes with a limited um, edition of the car. So I asked those out so there's no confusion. So yeah, right there. So to make it even more clear, let's look at the head unit, an actual picture of the head, head unit. So as you can see right there, these are the connectors right there, the 10 and 6. That's the connector that, you, that you're looking at. And this right here depicts that, that, that connector right there. And I know that this picture right here, this is not clear what the numbers are. So I went ahead and... Um, made a diagram here showing and th this diagram right here is just that exact connector right there it's just just so that it's visible so that you can actually see the numbers to make it even more clear here's the, the cables that you're concerned with for your speakers just for your speakers and they're, they're, they're actually up and down so 11 and 13 is one speaker 12 and 16 is another 1 and 5 is one and 2 and 6 is, is another and I highlighted them over here also. Just a, a note, this right here is showing you the back of the stereo, not the connector as you would look at it if you would like have the connector in your hand. So keep that in mind because if you're looking at the connector itself and you're looking at, at the, the, the part that plugs in, then all of these are going to be backwards. So this is actually denoting the back of the connector as you're looking at it. So you would have to pick up the connector, look at all the holes in the connector, and turn it around so that the wires are facing you, and then it'll match this right here. So keep that in mind. 
Also, although I don't show it here, you'll have you also have your uh, three cables that you're gonna need your accessory number three. That's gonna be your blue cable, the accessory power supply. Your number four is gonna be your 12 volt supply to uh, to your amplifier, and uh, number seven is gonna be your ground. That's if you're connecting it, you know, straight to this. Like I didn't do this, I connected it straight to the other amplifier I already had. But if you don't have another amplifier, then you would connect it to those number three, number four, and number seven. So I took the glove box completely off so that I can see back there and while I was routing the cable and make sure that I didn't, you know, get in the way of any of the car systems or anything like that. So I took the glove box off and the cable is going from the Alpine unit right here. It's going to go under the carpet right through there. And it's routed this way, all the way through the side, all the way up, up there, and all the way around, that way. And it comes out right there, where I am going to do all of the splicing here in a minute. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and button all this up now. I just did uh, straight through solder connections on those. Um, I made a mistake over here and ended up having to splice it way too close to the connector, but you know things happen So it is what it is, but no big deal. This is definitely not gonna be everybody's cup of tea It is a pain in the butt to solder things like this this close um, with this little room You know if you're motivated and you want to do something like this you can uh, If you can find the breakout kits, I would highly recommend that it'll make this so much easier so I spliced my factory harness, but I know that that's not the ideal thing to do. And I did that because I didn't have the time and, and the, the luxury to, to wait for one of these. And, and I just don't mind doing things like that. So, but I know that's not, that's not going to be, you know, for everyone. And most people are going to want one of these. So this is exactly, exactly what you need right here. This, this 10 and 6 pin breakout harness will allow you to connect your radio to the to the amplifier without cutting any factory wires at all so if you want to take it out in the future or or you know change the modification or something like that you can simply just unplug it plug the old factory harness back into the stereo and you're you know 100 percent back to stock so um i didn't i've never ordered something from this website so i'm not necessarily telling you to order from from this website but this is what i found but by, by doing some limited research um, and I'm going to show you what you would need to do if you ended up ordering something like this. What you'd have to do. So here you have a picture of the breakout harness. And uh, a picture of the Alpine. So the right end panel over here. And over here you have the left end panel. This, this is your output to your speakers. And this is your input from your radio. What you're going to do is you're going to splice right here your uh, speaker wires. The purple and green and the white and gray those are your speaker wires and you're gonna cut them right down the middle and you're gonna connect the side of the wires that goes to the OEM radio you're gonna connect that to the right end panel of the Alpine and then the side that goes to the factory harness you're gonna connect to the left end panel the output to the you know speakers as you see right here exactly like that and then obviously you'll just plug this in right right here to your radio and this right to your factory harness and then now you would have plugged in your amplifier without cutting any factory wires and not only that but you can also do all of this on a bench which is you know infinitely easier than trying to splice wires behind uh the, the console there uh, what you don't see here is you'll also need to to this black wire right here you, you'll need to tap into the ground you'll need to tap into the 12 volts right there and the accessory wires i don't have that in this diagram but uh, you'll obviously have to do that and if you have the amplifier installed somewhere behind the stereo or in the glove box then you know those wires will reach so you'll just simply splice into them solder them or use a butt connector and be done with it or like me where i installed it under the passenger seat you'll have to extend those cables to reach there or tap right into an existing amplifier like i did if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to order from an unknown place or, or just a, a reputable place, then you can just, you know, go to a, an established website like Metra and you'll enter your vehicle information. So let me do that right now. Subaru WRX Limited Get Part. It'll show you all the parts that they have for it. So what you're going to be interested in is right here. 
the Metra radio harness into car and then the Metra radio harness into factory radio. So you'll need to get both of those. So let me expand those so you see what I'm talking about. So yeah, so as you can see, it's the same as that other breakout harness that I just showed you, except that these are not connected to each other. So you'll have to do that yourself. When you get both of these, you'll have to go pin to pin and connect all of them except your speaker wires. And your speaker wires will stay unconnected and then you'll end up installing them just like that. Um, but this is also an option and it's still, even doing it this way, is still infinitely easier than, than splicing in the back of your head unit if you want to keep the car stock. So, Before you permanently mount the amplifier in a place where you're not going to be able to easily get to it, make sure you adjust the gain. The way you do that is you're going to start off by turning the gain all the way down on the amplifier on both channels, the rear and the front. Then you're going to put on a high quality source in your stereo and you're going to turn it up all the way until you hear distortion. When you hear distortion, you're going to back it up until the distortion goes away. Once you do that, you're going to come back here again and you're going to turn up the gain on the amplifier until you hear distortion again and then you're going to back it up until the distortion goes away. And you're going to do the same thing for the front and the same thing for the rear. You're going to raise it until you hear distortion and then back it up until the distortion goes away. Once you do that, you'll have optimum gain settings in your amplifier. So here we are, finished all of the wiring and buttoning this up and I also secured both amplifiers to the piece of wood that I put underneath. So it's not going anywhere. Neither of them are going anywhere. You don't want vibrations to work them loose and maybe loosen up a cable or something like that. You never know in case of an accident or you don't want loose uh, items underneath the seat. You also don't want any of this stuff to get caught under the seat when somebody's moving the seat back and forth. So it's pretty important to make sure that none of this stuff moves at all. Same thing with the cables. I wanted to make sure that none of the cables are going to be sticking up. So I secured them as best I could. This is going to be under the seat, so I wasn't too concerned with what it looked like, but you know, I definitely wanted it as clean as possible. I had to make compromises here and there, like the ground, you know, the ground and the power are flip-flopped. I did not want that, but it's just the way it turned out, and it was just easier to, to leave it like that than to try to reroute cables. So that's the way it ended up. What's important at this point is that you have your settings for both amplifiers exactly how you're going to want them because once obviously once you put the seat over them it's going to be much harder you'd have to remove the seat to make any adjustments so i've already done that but uh if you decide to do something like this make sure that before you put the seat down that that you uh, adjust the gain and all the settings as you're going to want them also you know obviously i could have used a five channel amplifier i know that but this was an afterthought and i initially wanted to upgrade the head unit but i didn't end up doing that i ended up just adding the the power pack i decided not to get rid of this one and just you know supplement it with that instead of getting one single five channel amplifier in other words one that would drive the the sub and then the four channel separately so this does the job so now i'm going to put the seat over them and we'll see how that works out so I put the seat back and I have no issues with moving the seat forwards and backwards. However, there was a little oversight. I did not realize that that was going to show that much. I thought it was going to be hidden. Even though it was on the corner, I thought that corner of the seat went all the way over. So that's my bad. Um, so what I'm going to do is I went to Lowe's and got me some flex tubing. This stuff is like two bucks. So I'm going to cover all of those cables with the flex tubing so that it looks you know professional since it's visible from outside of the car so that's what i'm doing now so i went ahead and put some of that flex tubing around these cables that are were showing from the outside and they look a lot better now what you see here is a result of compromises um because i wanted to keep this channel right here and this channel right here open i didn't put the, the amplifiers covering these two vents this vent right here and that vent over there so that's why they're placed in the locations that they're placed. And then I wanted more room in the middle here to mess with these cables. So that's why this cable's over here. I didn't realize at the time that this cable would show. Otherwise, maybe I would have tried to work out something else. But it doesn't matter. It's really not a big deal at all. I think it looks fine the way it is.
you can see from the comparison, the difference is night and day. And it's not just that it's louder. The bass hits tighter, it's fuller, and the existing amp and subs sound much better when it's going. The bass sounds like it's up front because the door speakers are putting out decent mids and lows. So when they're going in conjunction with the uh, existing amp and sub, it just sounds like it's up front and it sounds really nice. If I turn off the amp and sub, now it actually sounds pretty decent without an amp and sub. So those of you who are not too demanding of your bass uh, might actually be fine with just installing this amplifier and not adding an amp and a sub. The gain in the power pack could be pretty high, so make sure you perform the gain adjustment procedure as stated in the instructions. If your gain is set too high, you're going to hear a hiss coming from your speakers all the time. Now if you get in your car and then you turn down your gain until that hiss goes away or until it's... Um, tolerable to you then you're probably going to be pretty close to um, having optimally set the gain in the amplifier even though the amp is pretty small if you have it turned up all the way and turn on the music all the way you can easily blow your speakers it's pretty powerful for the size and it specifically says in the instruction to set if you're using speaker level inputs to set your amp between minimum and nine o'clock um, and that's enough in most cases if you install this amplifier in a WRX like I did in my 2017 WRX, the sound is just amazing. You're gonna be really pleased with it. It makes the head unit come alive. If you watch this whole video, I appreciate it and hope you got something out of it. Be sure you like it, and if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments section below. Until next video, take care.